The fully developed external auditory canal consists of a cartilaginous part and a bony part. Whilst development of the cartilaginous part is complete at birth, the bony part is only partially complete at birth and continues to grow well into the postnatal period. The external auditory canal develops from the first branchial cleft which is lined by ectoderm. Surrounding the first branchial clefts are the two branchial arches around which is developing the auricle. This is a cross section passing through the branchial arches to demonstrate the branchial clefts and their corresponding pouch. Now we shall deal with the development of the cartilaginous part which, unlike the bony part is fully developed at birth. During the second month of fetal life, the first branchial cleft grows inwards towards the first branchial pouch and establishes contact with it. Shortly thereafter there is a proliferation of the surrounding mesodermal tissue which breaks the contact between the two. This intervening mesodermal tissue will give rise to the middle fibrous layer of the tympanic membrane. Shortly thereafter beginning at 8 weeks, the branchial cleft starts growing deeper into the mesodermal tissue again, to form the primitive external auditory canal, which corresponds to the fibrocartilaginous canal of the adult. In the next phase of development, the ectodermal lining of the first branchial cleft, proliferates in the direction of the first pharyngeal pouch, to form a solid cord of cells, called the epithelial plug. The deepest part of the cells in the epithelial plug, form a thickening called the meatal plate, and grow into the mesenchyme which is just adjacent to it. The mesenchymal cells just adjacent to the meatal plate, forms the lamina propria or the middle fibrous layer of the tympanic membrane. After dealing with the development of the cartilaginous part, let us see how the bony part develops. The bony part has two stages of development, a prenatal and a postnatal phase. The external auditory canal is a part of the temporal bone, which at the end of fetal life, is made up of three principal components, squamosal, petromastoid and the tympanic ring. Whilst development of the epithelial plug, and the metal plate is taking place, development of the squamous part of the temporal bone also takes place, by the appearance of ossification centers in the mesoderm surrounding the developing tympanic membrane. Similar ossification centers develop for the tympanic ring which undergo a circumferential fusion process. However, a defect is left superiorly which corresponds to the notch of Rebenus in the fully developed tympanic ring. It is not until after the fifth month of fetal life, that the cord splits open, initially at its medial end, that is the end adjacent to the tympanic membrane, and proceeds laterally, or in other words towards the concha. By the end of the seventh month, canalization is complete, forming the bony external auditory canal. After canalization, the cells remaining at the periphery form the epithelial lining of the bony external auditory canal, whereas those remaining medially form the superficial layer of the tympanic membrane.
The medial layer of the tympanic membrane is derived from the epithelial lining of the first pharyngeal pouch. The trapped mesodermal tissue between the two epithelial layers forms the middle fibrous layer of the tympanic membrane. Whilst changes are taking place in the epithelial cord of cells, the tympanic ring also extends laterally. Whilst the tympanic ring extends laterally, so does the squamous part of the temporal bone. At birth, the tympanic ring is U-shaped with nodular prominences on each arm, which advance towards each other to separate the annulus or the tympanic sulcus from the foramen of Hushki. The tympanic sulcus lodges the tympanic membrane. Now, let us look into the postnatal development of the canal. By the end of the first postnatal year, these nodular prominences fuse and the foramen of Hushka closes in late childhood. The tympanic ring continues to grow laterally during the entire period. In the newborn infant the mastoid bone is essentially non-existent, and the tympanic bone is a relatively flat ring, rather than a cylinder. The relative position of the entire temporal bone in the neonate is inferolateral, in comparison with temporal bone in the adult, and its more lateral orientation. The lateral growth of the tympanic ring, carries the tympanic membrane from the nearly horizontal orientation of the neonate, to the adult angulation by the age of 4 to 5 years. The canal continues to grow until about the age of 9 years, by which time it is fully developed, and extends from the well of the concha to the tympanic membrane. It is 2.4 cm in length and it consists of a bony part and a cartilaginous part. The bony part forms the inner or medial two-thirds, whilst the cartilaginous part forms the outer or lateral one-third. 